Efforts to thwart the advance of North Korea's nuclear weapon program have taken many forms over the past 30 years. Following the collapse of the 1994 Agreed Framework Agreement between the United States and North Korea, a different approach was needed. In 2003, six global actors convened for the first of a series of multilateral negotiations. The purpose of these talks was to reach an agreement on disarming and ending North Korea's nuclear arms development program. The meetings attended by China, Japan, North Korea, South Korea, Russia, and the United States came to be known as the Six-Party Talks. One notable South Korean participant was former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade Song Min Soon. Former Minister Song was chief delegate for South Korea during the Six-Party Talks. His efforts laid the groundwork for what many thought at the time to be one of the most promising endeavors to make the Korean Peninsula nuclear-free. Like South Korea, each of the countries involved in the Six-Party Talks had a specific agenda and played a different role in the negotiations. Basically, the four parties, DPRK, United States, Republic of Korea, and China, were the main actors. And in the case of Japan and Russia, they were more doing advisory and observing role. China wanted to become very much balanced and objective, neutral. But at critical times, they were more of accommodating North Korean's position. And South Korea played uh, more of the facilitating the communication based on its own position. Each of the talks had a different focus and objective as part of their wider mission. At the six-party talks of 2005, the most difficult uh, uh, subject was how to reflect North Korea's demand on light water reactor problem. And North Korea uh, really wanted to restore its right to have light water reactors in return of their giving up nuclear uh, program. The provision of light water reactors to North Korea was stipulated in Geneva Agreement done during Clinton administration. But when Bush administration came, this new administration in Washington refused to provide light water reactors. So there was a confrontation between the two parties. President Roe thought without any breakthrough in six-party talks, he could not make any opening of the dialogue and the improvement of relations with North Korea. He was very much committed to this breakthrough. Usually, these two leaders of the allies do not discuss in this confrontational setting, but he did not shy away from going into a confrontational argument with President Bush. We negotiated for 19 days how to accommodate the North Korean demands and the United States position, while not stipulating the provision of light water reactors to North Korea, we settled on the conditions to discuss the provision of light water reactors at an appropriate time. I think the uh, United States uh, was uh, getting more flexible in its position uh, in the course of negotiation, particularly reflecting the views from Korea and Japan. And the other one is DPRK, for example, had a very strict view, but in the course of negotiation, uh, they made some uh, flexible uh, change, particularly uh, in the course of talks with uh, Americans, as well as communicating with China and South Korea. We agreed on the normalization of relations among countries concerned and offering economic cooperation and establishment of peace regime and regional security dialogue. The high point of the negotiation was we could reach a whole structure of denuclearization of Korean Peninsula. North Korea's abandonment of its nuclear weapons, if they had, and uh, the existing nuclear programs. North Korea unequivocally declared that it would give up its nuclear weapon. When we see the Trump-Kim Jong-un meeting in Singapore last year, they just said denuclearization. Kim Jong-un did not mention that it would give up its own weapon and uh, program. In 2005, uh, this was inclusive everything and in clear manner. 
The agreement confirming this came to be known as the Joint Statement. It was seen as a major breakthrough, and former Minister Song played a crucial role in this achievement. But outside actions taken by participating countries would have a significant impact on the lasting success of this agreement. The low point uh, was not on the negotiation table, but outside the table. The U.S. Treasury Department designated a bank in Macau named Banco Delta Asia as a primary money laundering concern. That bank uh, was an uh, outlet of North Korea's international money transaction. So North Korea regarded it as another sanction on themselves. So they said the six-party talks were simply just a disguised facade to strangulate them, North Korea. And because of this Banco Delta Asia case, we could not make a, a concrete implementation of the agreement. In the meantime, North Korea went ahead with the first nuclear test. The implementation of the joint statement failed, mainly because of the matter of uh, verification protocol. United States wanted to have a verification protocol covering whole procedure of dismantling North Korean nuclear weapons and program. Whereas North Korea wanted to divide this protocol stage by stage, I think the United States uh, has the right to ask this whole process of verification, because verification is the key of this arms control issue. But North Korea cannot agree on the whole verification protocol because that requires a transparency of the whole, their system. If we could uh, have uh, this stage-by-stage -stage approach, then I think uh, uh, the result might be somewhat different because North Korea could not ac accept the American position while uh, there was a, a serious trust uh, deficit. We always what needed to incrementally build mutual trust. Trust building should be incremental because you cannot build trust and competence all at once. I think that is some lesson uh, we have to learn.